Well, all the sycophants that are trying to become Donald Trump's vice president or maybe on Donald Trump's cabinet, you know, they're out on Sunday morning shows praising to the mighty Donald Trump and defending the mighty Donald Trump. Now they're trying to reverse the thing that the, uh, what we all know that Donald Trump has sweat, wet dreams about being a dictator. Well, good old Doug Burgum was on CNN's uh, State of the Union, and he thought that he was going to be able to pull a fast one over a young and smart young, uh, young host. I think she did a fairly good job compared to other hosts. Again, maybe a lot of that comes with youth and I am just going to confront you. But anyhow, Bergam wants you to believe that the one that is a dictator is Biden. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. I want to ask you about something that you've been saying repeatedly about President Biden. Take a listen to this. Talk about, you know, being a dictatorship. This is the this is what's happening under Biden. Uh, under Joe Biden, uh, we're actually living under a dictatorship today. If you want to find out what it's like to live in a dictatorship, we're living in one now. But we know what it's like under dictatorship. And that dictatorship right now is Joe Biden. I understand you don't like President Biden's policies on, on immigration or student loans. But but respectfully, I mean, you're calling the democratically elected president a dictator. Well, we've got three branches of government. Uh, and this president, more like any other, has bypassed Congress because as a governor of a natural resources state, a big ag state, uh, we're facing over 30 rules and mandates. Each one of those could be eight. 800 pages to 1,400 pages long. None of them have come from Congress, and all of them could literally kill the industries that we have in our state, including baseload electricity, which we need to be competitive in the arms race around AI with China, who's building baseload electricity plants like two a month. So that's happening without Congress. And then, of course, on the student loan thing, when the Supreme Court ruled against him, then he just said, hey, we'll figure a different way to do it. So I, I just think that there's, again, a double standard here. He is bypassing the other two branches of government to push an ideological view uh, whether it's on economics or whether it's on uh, climate extremism, he's doing that without without using the other branches. And, and I you think don't, you don't like his executive orders and you don't like his policies. I understand that. I don't think anyone expects the Republican governor to, to agree with President Biden on that. But uh, it's not a dictatorship. Well, I think, again, part of where this word has come from has been it been a nonstop uh, media attack on President Trump saying that, oh, that he that he might use executive orders when he takes office. And I'm just was trying to make again, make the point here that under this current administration, most of the changes that are driving inflation in our country, uh, the stuff he's not doing on the border, which he could be doing with executive orders. I mean, the open borders and the inflation are things that he's doing by himself alone, uh, ignoring the other branches of government. Well, I counted uh, Trump's not 220 executive orders when he was in office. President Biden so far has only signed 139, the same you know time span. And on executive action on immigration, it was Speaker Mike Johnson who was calling on President Biden to take executive action, saying it wasn't Congress's responsibility, it was his. Let me tell you what impressed me with the host. You know, it, uh, he could have said a whole lot of different things, but there's nothing like having a host that is prepared. You know, uh, she points out to Bergham, the things that you're mentioning isn't about you may disagree with it, but it's not following a dictatorship. But then she was ready for she was sufficiently knowledgeable to know two things as far as using executive authority. It is Mike Johnson of the, the Congress that wants the president to do that when it comes to immigration and other things that they are incapable are too, uh, uh, too divided to pass. So there we have the Republican, uh, the Republican Speaker of the House in, insinuating that the president should take executive actions on issues. But more importantly, she pointed out to Doug Burgum, who probably should have done his own work, that he, if he's calling the Biden a dictator because of the amount of executive actions he takes, actions that don't require the Congress at all, that the person who had my, many more executive actions, and remember, there are only about six and change left in the, in, in the first term for Biden. Donald Trump had a hell of a lot more executive actions. So again, she pointed out, she called them out, and it makes them look silly. We 
spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.